Hollywood. I got mad skills. It's the Tom Likas Show. Too cool. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. And KJ Allen heard at the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives announced that two skinheads were plotting to kill Senator Barack Obama wearing white tuxedos and white top hats. That's right. They were also planning on shooting or decapitating 102 black people. Two neo-Nazi skinheads. Uh, They were located in Tennessee. And um, we're getting your reaction to this at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. Let's say hello here to uh, John on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, Tom. uh, Long time, first time. Thank you. Uh, I just got to say something. You know, I jumped in the conversation and I heard what's going on and heard all the racism talk and everything. Um, my biological grandfather is white. The grandfather that raised me was black. Um, we're in the 2008, 2009. It's time for change, you know. America has to deal with the fact that we're a melting pot, man. It's ridiculous. There's no reason for racism anymore, but of course we're going to have it. Blacks are going to hate Mexicans. Mexicans are going to hate blacks. Whites are going to hate everybody if they're raised that way. But the only thing that matters here in our society should be, you know, living together, living together and making money. And just, I mean, it's time for change. There ain't no reason to hate anybody anymore over some stupid, uh, stupid stuff that can't solve anything. There's, there's no reason to fight over the land. If we, I mean, get, you know, gangs fighting over gangs, over pieces of stuff that they're never going to own. They're only bringing the property value down of their own damn community. There's, I, no, there's no point in it anymore. Well, some good points there. I thank you for that. Rick on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hi. Hey, first time caller, long time listener. Thank um, you. I wanted to ask you, uh, do you think that McCain could get elected on account of racism and stupidity that is basically overrun in, in this country? Racism is the only reason the Democratic candidate doesn't have a 65 to 35 lead. Yeah, but I, I don't know. I just, I just it's already like a fact. He, I mean, after the last eight years, how can the Democratic candidate only have 50% in the polls? Yes. Yeah. And, and the answer is, of course, racism. I just really hope that Obama will get this election. Uh, I hope it's just downhill from here. Well, I agree with you on that, and I thank you for the call. Here's Dave on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello? Yes. Yes. Um, I was just listening to the show, and everyone's talking about racism, and I feel that we need to start looking more at classism because eventually the races are going to blend, just like in countries like Brazil. And, you know, they claim there's no racism down there, and, you know, but the real barrier is who has money, who has access to education. Um, you know, I think those are going to be the issues, and the racism is just a huge distraction. People need to look at where their pocketbook is and how they're going to live and what size of fence they're going to be on, the haves or the have-nots. Uh, in my mind, the have-nots are the people who are not willing to take risks, not willing to complete their educations, uh-huh. uh, not willing to work hard. Yeah, I could agree with you on, on that point, but, you know, it's not going to be about race in the future. It's going to be about class, and you're going to be white and poor, you're going to be black and poor, Mexican and poor. That's what it's going to be. Do you, are you educated and able to take care of yourself in the changing society, or are you going to be left outside and marginalized? Well, only time will tell, Dave. Thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM. Here's Mike on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Father? I'm okay, son. Um, uh, I just I just wanted to get my two cents in and uh, say I'm a white guy from Southern California, and uh, I think uh, racists are the uh, the most ignorant people around. Um, um, I'm I'm rooting for Barack Obama, and uh, you know I see racists all the time around here, and uh, I hear what they have to say, and I just uh, pretty much laugh at them. You know, um, they're, they're just, they just got, you know, everyone, every, every person on this planet is born with the same brain in their head, and, uh, it's what you do with it that says who you are. You know, and, uh, that's pretty much all I had to say, and, uh, uh if you could blow me up, that'd be awesome. I certainly can. 
1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Two neo-Nazi skinheads were caught plotting to assassinate Senator Barack Obama. What do you think about this? Let's say hello to Matt on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? I'm doing okay. Pretty good. Um, I was just wondering, um, I'm voting for Obama, but I was wondering, is there anything about McCain that you do like? Is there anything about him that I like? Yeah, like any of his... Uh... Any of his issues or... Well, honestly, I, I don't really hear anything about a plan. I, I don't think you can cut taxes with a $400 billion budget deficit. You can't. Yeah, yeah. You can't. Yeah, you're definitely right on that. <laughs> it, it's preposterous. You can't yeah. do it. Hmm. You want to talk about tax cut? First talk about how you're going to cut $400 billion in spending. What exactly are you going to cut? That is definitely true. And if you can find that on his website, please send me the link. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Joe is listening to our online stream in Seattle on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Yeah. When, when are people going to actually drop their racism? And when they're born in the United States, they're red, white, and blue. And I myself, I am gray. I have no color. And uh, I'm... Uh, you know, when is a helping hand going to help a helping hand to make this a better society in life? You know, when are they ever going to drop their their racism? You know, it it, it sickens me day in and day out. Everybody is a hardworking person in the United States, and you know, and you want to do drugs and you want to screw up your life, then go ahead and do that. And you know, it's it. it, it uh, yeah, it's, it's just maddening. Anyways, hey, I'm a short-time listener, first-time caller, and, uh, you know, it's... And, and we'll go back to Clinton days. You know, it all starts with the family. And yes, 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 yes. Oh, boy. I don't know if you've ever seen that character that Fred Armisen does on Weekend Update, who uh, says he's a comedian and he's going to... Uh, <laughs> he's going to comment on the front-page stories of the day. <laughs> That guy sounds like him. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Armin on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Yes. Tom, what's going on, buddy? Not much, buddy. Yeah, hello to all the listeners. Listen, uh, all these people calling in with all this racism and uh, depending on McCain, Obama, I think uh, overall the U.S. people have forgotten to have hopes within themselves. You know, as a country, we need to go forward, not depend, just see if what everyone sit back and what Obama or McCain or, you know, a couple of little groups will, will be doing. You know, I think we overall forgot the vision that we're the people, we're the ones that make the country run. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, again, I think uh, there there are certain uh, people out there who have an agenda uh, to uh, split us all up uh, uh, and divide the spoils uh, to uh, uh, try to uh, become so-called community leaders or uh, leaders of a particular racial group or leaders of a particular uh, socioeconomic group uh, by uh, splitting us all up into smaller and smaller groups instead of finding what we all have in common. No, you're absolutely right, Tom, and I, we, we're seeing that every day with the economy and with whatever we're doing to try and go forward, we're seeing that happening. Uh, but uh, you know, the solution starts with just one person helping the next person, not having this racism. Anything these, all these people do in the world somehow, some way relates to each other. You know, all of us play a piece in it. So if you don't like Mexicans, you're basically touching a Mexican product that came to your house that might be a sauce, a napkin, or whatever. Let's get it all together. Let's make it work and go forward in life. Uh, let's enjoy. Let's have a great time all together. You know, it's, uh, what's the point? We're seeing the bad, what we can get from all the bad. Let's try some good. You know, trying some good overall. If it doesn't work, we can go, always go back to this bad situation. Armin, thank you for that. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, Paul on the Tom Likas show. Hello. What is going on, brother? Student radio show here, Paul. Hey, excellent show today. I really enjoy it. Let Thank me you. tell you something. I am of Mexican Indian descent, and some of the things that you talk about are all tied into, interestingly enough, this topic. When you talk about religion and you talk about government, it seems like they all use fear to keep us in control. You know, you see the ads that uh, John McCain is running, and I have a great deal of respect for McCain. Don't get me wrong. 
But I think there's a lot of fear around the country of change. You know, people fear change because they don't know what to expect. And I really think it's darkest just before the light. One of the things that you were talking about when you were talking about uh, the desperation that has set in, people are really scared. They're, they fear change. They don't know what's going to happen. All these people just need to relax. Everything's going to be fine. We're going to be in a much better situation. By the way, we've just had a lot of change in the last two months. The stock market is down 35%. Uh, unemployment is up over 7%. Uh, so we've already had some changes, folks. Don't be afraid of change. Uh, it can only get better from here. Yeah, I, I just want to throw this out, Tom. This is uh, this is the one thing that I really want everybody to know, more so than anything else. It's kind of ironic. All these people that don't want to vote for Barack Obama, life is going to be so much better for them after all this is said and done. Now, I, I think that is the irony, and there's no doubt about that. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-8666. The Tom Likas Show. The shortest commercial breaks we've ever had. The Tom Likas Show. The new faster, sleeker, leaner Tom Likas Show. At 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's Paul on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. You busy over there? First call of the segment, always like this. Hello. Thank you so much, Paul. You, yeah, Yusuf on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Yes, sir. How are you? First time, long time. Thank you. All right. Yeah, you know, I wanted to say that uh, cultural anthropologists think the root of all evil is having a belief and believing that that belief is the one and only truth. And I wanted to say that, you know, we, we do need guys like the, uh, the neo-Nazi guy who called because he kind of, his argument wasn't really based in any reality, but it it does show that there are a lot of views there, and if we don't address all those views, there's no way we can span these social norms in our country. I, I don't think we have to address uh, the views of Nazis, neo-Nazis, racists, extremists. Uh, they're out there. They have freedom of speech in this country, and that's about all. Uh, I do not think we need to be uh, doing headstands trying to satisfy people like that, that, that they are being heard or uh, that they are being taken into account. Yes, sir. I agree. Uh, we don't need to satisfy them. I do think that, um, you know, there is a, there are a lot of views in this country, and that's what make this, makes this country great. And, um, you know, if that means every once in a while we got to hear one of these guys uh, rant on about his stupidity, then uh, I'm all for it. Yusuf, thank you. I appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Jeremy on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. How's it going, Tom? It's going great. Hey, I just kind of want to touch back on that neo-Nazi assassination attempt nonsense. Right. Fools. Because if you think about it, they're always going to wait till he's president. Don't you think they would try to assassinate him now when his security is absolutely way less today than it's going to be when he's president? Well, uh, they were going to try, according to the uh, BATF. Yeah, but it just depends on how you approach it. It, it. It's just, it seems like to me, like you said initially, it just seems like kind of nonsense or something that could have just, I don't know, spurred up out of desperation or, or something because it just doesn't make any well, sense. I, I, well, I, but you're misinterpreting what I said when I say it's desperation. I mean the skinheads and the racists and the Klansmen and all, not to mention the extreme right-wingers, are all getting desperate, and they're all whining and crying and squealing like stuck pigs right now. Oh, no, I feel you, man. And McCain is desperately trying to come up with anything. Did you see the latest? He found some interview with Obama from a radio station in 2001, and he had, like, some quote in there, and he was trying to say it was Marxism he was in, in, in advocating or something. I mean, they are so desperate because they know that Barack Obama is going to win next Tuesday. They oh. are desperate. It's without a doubt. It's, I just wanted to touch bases on that whole, like, security thing. These guys just seem to me, you know, they're, they're just throwing the last grenades. It's all they can do. They know it's a sinking ship, and before they put on their life jackets, they figured they might as well throw someone overboard. Thank you for that, Jeremy. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Gil is listening to our online stream in Gainesville on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. 
How you doing, Tom? Doing okay, Gil. I just wanted to point out, man, that um, as long as everybody, this sounds cliche, um, but everybody really has to get along because if people on the right or the left of whatever issue stand on their soapbox and decide that they are superior to the other person or the other group, you're just going to fester more of the same, no matter what position you actually take. So, yeah. Uh, the, the other people's racism is not my fault. No, it isn't. So then, how And I will not take responsibility for it. How would you go about abating it then? Because that's how it's not my job to abate it. Hey, say again. It is not my job to abate other people's ignorance. Don't you feel that as long as you get sucked into that discussion, this is I'm not sucked into a discussion. I'm making it real clear that I have very little tolerance or patience for racists, skinheads, or anybody their ilk. Oh, I agree. I mean, it, 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 it's a cancer. It really is. That's not cancer. getting dragged into anything. I've got no patience for it, period. It's a cancer. How then do you propose to excise the cancer? I, you can't excise the cancer. There's always going to be extremists, nutcases, nutballs, uh, people who are depressed, people who are angry because of their own laziness and unwillingness to be educated. Uh, there's always going to be people who are going to be desperate and bitter and, and have desperate measures in mind to try to do something about their pathetic uh, b b lot in life. Agreed. Some people will. Some people make the choice to be mired wherever it is that they choose to be. So the, I say there's nothing you can do about it except when you catch these people trying to do something, put them away and throw away the key. Oh, I, I, hey, look, look, I, I agree with you on that topic, on that point. I, I'm not, I'm not trying to battle you on this, but by the same token, I think that as long as everybody keeps taking a side, it's us versus them. You're never going to find consensus. I'm not looking for consensus with, 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 with insane people, with morons. I, I'm not looking for consensus. The criminally insane. We are in a democracy. We don't need a consensus. All we need is, all we need is 50.1% of the electoral vote. We do not need consensus. I'm with you, Tom, but the criminally insane are going to be forever insane. That's right. Okay. And so you're never going to have a consensus as long as they are part of the population. So basically, this is an anger. There is no hope for us in the future to achieve anything beyond where we are. You're simply going to be switching sides. And you do the best switch. you can with the way things are. The only guarantee in life, as you have pointed out, actually, is that the only guarantee that you have is that there's going to be change. No matter right. where you are. That's true. Yes. That's the only guarantee. That's right. Now, does, does that mean that you always have to battle one side versus the other only when they put themselves in your face well again you're talking about an you, well, I, I understand i'm talking about the bell curve here you're looking at the extreme le right side of the bell curve or the left side i'm talking about the people in the middle the people in the middle would agree that they probably wouldn't want to spend the rest of their lives taking sides it's only the people at the extremes of that bell curve that would choose to utilize whatever means necessary which is what you're seeing now in this campaign whatever means necessary to actually foster the anger to be able to stage a fight. But it, again, it does not mean that I am responsible for their ignorance, and I won't take responsibility for it. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, Steve. Steve, you're on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom, I just want to say I love you. I'm calling from New York City. I used to listen to you when you used to broadcast to New York. Now i got to listen on the Internet. And I just want to make the quick comment that in America, I'm a black guy, but I, I am a musician, and I do not look at people because you're white, because you're black. I do believe that, that Obama is the best guy. But besides that, there's no history of black people going after white people in this country. There's just no history of that. Well, uh, I agree. I totally agree. I, d t look, uh, the, the fact is that uh, we, we have a history of slavery. We have a history of racism. We have a history of institutionalized racism. Um, we have worked at changing it. It hasn't completely changed yet. I think the election of a Barack Obama will go a long way to healing some of the pain, but it will not completely uh, heal everything or fix everything. Yeah, man, can you take me out uh, railroad track style? <laughs> Do we have any railroad trains or anything that's train-like over there? You used to have it, right? I think we did, but like as we've said, when we moved Jesus from... Jesus style, then. 
Jesus style. All right, gee, we could do Jesus style. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. Two neo-Nazi skinheads have been charged with uh, plotting to assassinate Barack Obama. Did you hear about this? It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Gilbert on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Hey, first, how you doing? Doing great. Doing great. I want to say a uh, first-time caller, but I do love your show, man. Thank you. Hey, uh, real quick, just getting into the... Into the, uh, the some of the comments that are being made here by some of the other callers. I mean, I, I know I understand that uh, we're we're due for change, and and I strongly believe that Barack is the the person that's going to uh, change this country for the better and and get us out of this, the state that we're in now. But uh, in having this conversation with some of my coworkers that are are uh, of African American, black, and uh, I, I, what I was just asking them is all of a sudden why now is is voting such a big deal? Uh, in the African community, African American community, were voting, and all you hear is on some of these shows. It's all about voting. They want to vote. They want to push the vote out there and get all the blacks to get out there and vote. Where at other times when voting was a big issue, it wasn't such a big issue in the African American community. If I feel maybe if I'm wrong, that now they're looking to vote and they're voting because of the color of his skin, not because. They're looking at the facts and voting because of the color of Barack Obama's skin. And well, there's going to be a certain number of people who are going to vote for Barack Obama for that reason. But uh, there was a survey last week that said that 7 out of 10 Americans said race is not a factor in their vote. I mean, that's, that's maybe something that they're saying. But I, I really believe maybe because I haven't seen it such a big issue. Well, is it a factor in your vote? Uh, no, not at all. And not uh, at all. it's not in mine either. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'm just saying, you know, going and moving on to here, just watching some of these award shows and some of the, some of the, the sponsors and people that are endorsing him, it, it's like I feel a little that they're they're big and voting now. They're pushing all these superstars, all these singers and rap artists. Well, keep in mind, and, many superstars also supported Bill Clinton. I mean, that, that's including true. many black superstars. That, that, is, that is true also. Never forget that, that, that many people thought the turning point in Bill Clinton's 1992 campaign is when he went on the Arsenio Hall show and he played the saxophone. Yeah. Great point, great point. I mean, I, I would just, I want to see what your comment was on that. And, well, and, you, you know, heard it already, so let's move on. 1-800-5800-TOM is our tele... I wanted to find out what your comment was because I called because I wanted to see what you thought, and that's why I thought I would call because I thought maybe you would tell me what you thought if I talked to you long enough, eventually I would hear your opinion about that, which I thought I would tell you because I thought if I called in, you would tell me your opinion about... <sighs> Kill me now. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Gabriel on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello. Up, I'm doing okay, Gabriel. We got eight days left to this election, Tom. I am psyched. I'm going to put a big fat bull by Barack. Really? Yes, sir, I am. I want to ask you, well, first of all, I call to commend you on your openness and extreme tolerance for cultures beyond anybody I've met. And uh, I just decided to talk to you, first-time caller, long-time listener. I just want to know, how, what's the origin of your of your tolerance for culture? And, uh, where, where well, you... I grew up in the, uh, one of the most, at the time, one of the most diverse communities in America, which was the South Bronx. And um, the fact is, if you don't like living in a diverse society, Los Angeles is not the place for you to live. Um, I live here because I love it as it is, not as some of these morons would like it to be, where I don't know what they want. We had that one moron who, uh, you know, as far as he's concerned, he'd like to move everybody out who's not white. Uh, my attitude about it is uh, I love L.A. because of everything it has to offer, the people, the cultures, the food, everything. I love it. Now, well, I'm, I'm a Mexican-American, born and raised here in L.A., uh, college-educated. 
And I have a brother-in-law who is from Orange County, um, and he is completely, it's a night and day as far as my personality and his, as far as our views politically and whatnot. But uh, it's, it's insane to, to know that 30 minutes away, it's like complete night and day difference, and uh, it's, it's pretty extreme. But I'm really excited to see how this, this is going to turn out, and uh, I just want to, I want you to take me out with a big, fat, peaceful bong hit. Here it comes, Gabriel. Can we all just get a bong? It's Dave on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, how are you doing? Great. Hey, I got a question for you. Two, a couple of questions, actually. Uh, what do you think about us as Americans being forced in this day and age to either elect a black or a woman into office? Well, first of all, uh, a black is not running against a woman. Uh, you have a man who is half black, half white running against a white male. No, 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 I understand that, but I'm saying either way, if you go either way in either party, we're either going to have a, min a, min a minority or a woman no, in office. I have no problem with that. No, not the problem, but I mean, don't you think that there's some higher power that's forcing that to happen, that we don't have a choice, that it's going to happen? A higher power? Which higher power are you referring to? I, 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 you know, I don't know what you believe in, or, you know, maybe not God, but somebody is controlling... Over the president. Somebody's concerned. Really? There's a higher power so, above the president. So, Somebody yeah. So, God him. is behind this. Not God. Not well, who, God. Who, who, who would know. it be? It could be the mafia, for all we know. Who, the, who, who knows? Well, well, why would that be? Who knows? Why That's would the mafia do that? And the mafia might put an Italian up there. <laughs> I don't see any Italians running. Well, you never know. We'll see what happens in four years. All right. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. An Italian's ever gotten near the White House. You kidding me? Hasn't happened. I think the last time an Italian got into the White House is when Yogi Berra won the World Series. Was it? 1-800-5800. I'm just telling the truth here. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Carlos on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Good call there, Carlos. Steve on the Tom Likas Show. Okay, Thomas on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you doing? Great. Uh, yeah, this was a uh, call, and um, since you're speaking on racism, I just wanted to tell you an experience I had in Mississippi about 10 years ago. Um, well, I grew up in the Bronx like you, and then moved to the Cape, so I've had a very diverse life. But uh, when I moved down to Mississippi to do, take an assignment as a therapist, I walked into a downtown barbershop, and um, unaware to me, I wasn't aware that these were racist barbers, but I asked for a military haircut since I was fresh out of the Army, and they told me they didn't know how to cut my kind of hair. So I just told them I just want a simple fade, like military style. And they said, we don't know how to cut your kind of hair. And he asked his fellow barber, he's like, do you know how to cut his hair? And he's like, no, I don't. And he said, well, there's a good barber shop on the other side of the tracks if you'd like to go there. So there's a lot That's of racism still. pretty outrageous. And by the way, uh, uh, the, just to get to that specific point, uh, don't most states that license barbers uh, make you learn how to cut every kind of hair? Absolutely. Right. <laughs> so I just there's, the deep south would be the last place to get rid of racism. That's for sure. Because it's still there. I had girls who were scared to date. But me believe me, it's not racial. just the deep south. I, I had the misfortune of living in Boston for a year. And I want to tell you something. For all the liberals that they uh, supposedly elect from uh, Massachusetts, you'd be amazed at the number of small-minded bigots I met in Massachusetts. It was pretty outrageous. Oh, I agree with you. I've been to the north side many a times, and there's, there's quite a few around there, too. Just blew me away. Danielle on the Tom like his show. Hello. Hello. My, um, I was just listening to you guys about uh, you and uh, Barack Obama. Well, do you have the radio on there? Because I'm hearing something in the background, and you got to turn it off, which Dean already told you. Huh? Well, um, do I hear the radio on? You guys were all talking about... Did I hear the radio on? Yeah, it is. Didn't Dean tell you to turn it off? No. Dean, step in here, Dean. 
Let's get Dean in here. We'll get the answer right now. Come on. Now. Sit down, Dean. Come on now. Danielle has the radio blasting in the background. Did, okay. Did, here, she says the, you did not tell her to turn it off. Here's the drill. We're dealing with a 15-year-old girl who's actually probably lying. I'm going to guess she's even younger than that. But, no, uh, I'm 15. And uh, I had asked her where she was calling from, and I couldn't get a straight answer from her there either. It's, she said a small town at first, and I believe she said Loyalton, which I'm like, where, where is Loyalton? Loyalton. Do you, have you ever heard of it? That's like the uh, Nigerians who place fake profiles on <laughs> Match.com. I come from Loyalton, California. No. I'm from Firestone Park, California. They, ma they make up these cities that sound real, but they're really not. So I just thought it was interesting for a younger person to call in about this. And actually, she had a valid point. Uh, however, it was, as you know, difficult to get through to her. But I do say, and I have said, I even say it in my sleep, I believe, shut your damn radio off. I say it all and, the time. And you did say it to of Danielle. Of course, of Danielle, course. Danielle, you just said the dean didn't say that to you. Well, I didn't hear it. You didn't hear it because the radio was turned up. I don't know. Well, darling, I'll tell you what. You listen for a while and hear how the professionals make their calls and then call back once you know how to call a radio station, okay? All right. Thank you, D. This Italian's leaving. Thank you, sir. <laughs> I don't want to ask Dean who he's voting for. That's a whole other, uh, whole other <laughs> show, whole other day. 1-800 for talking about tools of ignorance. 1-800-5800-TOM. Wops on politics. <laughs> <laughs> One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Is <laughs> our telephone number? Yes, another edition of Wops on Politics. <laughs> who you vote for? Who am I voting for? Who are you voting for? Forgot about. It. <laughs> I mean, uh, come on. <laughs> The last time there was an Italian in the White House, I'll tell you what, it's been a while. All right, uh, 1 800 5800 Tom is our telephone number. Two neo Nazi skinheads have been uh, caught. Uh, they're accused of attempting to plan an assassination of Barack Obama. What do you think about this? Tom like it. 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 866. A Tom Likas show. From Hollywood, I'm Tom Likas. It's 1 800 5800 Tom. That's our telephone number. Two neo Nazi skinheads. Charged with attempting to plot the assassination of Barack Obama. They were also planning on killing or shooting. Possibly decapitating 102 black people. Let me think. 1-800-5800-866. It's Denise on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hi, Tom. How are you? Great. Good. Um, I'm a new student, and actually, actually, I wanted some ideas of some forty dollar dates instead of the racist plot assassination, racist assassination plot. Can you change the subject? So you need help getting a date? No, I need some examples of some under forty dollar dates. You need some. Are you uh, taking someone out on a date, and you want to spend less than forty dollars? Yes. No, yes. no, you're just saying that. You're just trying to disrupt the program, but thank you for trying. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Jason on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi. Hey, Tom. Yeah, first of all, I love your show, and I'm just calling to say, you know, I'm I'm a racist, and, and I don't agree with, uh, you know, the, the the other the skinheads and stuff that act out on their on the racism, but racism in its purest form is uh, you know it's a good thing. It's loving your own race and wanting your own well, race. Why do you need to love yourself because of your race? Well, it's it, to me, it's just an identity thing. You identify. But I don't I don't identify with my race. I love myself, Tom Likas. That's who right. I love. Uh, but I don't see myself as being in a club with other white people. It doesn't make any sense. 
Right, but I mean, it's it's kind of a natural thing. I'm not to, proud of you. I uh, what what do I know about you, and why do I care? Right, but we but we but we encourage other races to be proud of their race. We no, encourage... I, actually, I don't think we do. Huh? I don't think we do that. Well, I, we have Black History Month, and you know we support or we. Uh, celebrate Cinco de Mayo, we, we encourage other cultures to be... And how do we celebrate Cinco de Mayo? By getting drunk? Well, I mean, they they do it. I mean, it's... You I mean, know. come on. Yeah, you're Honestly. It's like saying we celebrate St. Patrick's Day. Well, I mean, it's... You, people, you know, cities throw parades and, and they do celebrate it. All I'm saying they, is... They throw you know, parades for what? All, all, all I'm saying is... White what, are they, what, are cities, what are cities throwing parades for? in Southern California, I know such you know, as for a fact that, uh, such as Hawaii where is Northern. where is the Cinco de Mayo parade being held? What's that? Maybe I'd like to attend. Where is the Cinco de Mayo parade being well, held? I'm just saying, you, you know what I'm saying. No, I don't know. I know. I I know what you're saying, and it's ignorant because uh, I I don't see do I, I don't see. Do well, ignorance. no, no, it has to do with your ignorance because you are ignorant. I'm ignorant because I'm proud to be white. That's. That, that's yeah, I think I, right I think it is ignorance. I, I, the, 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 being proud to be of any particular race or ethnicity is just plain stupid. It's not an accomplishment on your part, right? I mean, uh, your parents uh, were fumbling around for a condom and decided to have sex uh, without a condom, and that's why you're here. No accomplishment on your part, right? And so I, I'm proud of my accomplishments. I'm proud of who I am as a person. Uh, but I really couldn't care less about people because they are the same color as I am. It's irrelevant. But, but but yet you coddle to every other person. No, I really don't. I, I, because, I honestly that, don't. That right there is ignorant. I, who, how do I coddle people? I'm listening. Well, you, you know, oh, you, you coddle to every other Tell race. me specifically how I do it. I want to hear. Like Tell it. me specifically how I do it. I'm listening. You idiot. <laughs> idiot, moron. You were not up to, you were not mad enough to finish the phone call, you moron. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Jack on the Tom Likas show. Tom, Jack. You know, if you would just run for office, we would not be in this boat. Yeah, but I have too many skeletons in my closet. No, I think all your skeletons are public knowledge. I've got ex wives. I got uh, you know. I've smoked weed. And, you know, true, true, I've, true, I've, true. I screwed around to my wives and girlfriends, and um, it's pretty well known. I'm still going to vote for it. I'm doing a write-in for Tom Likas. I don't care. All right, go for it. I was very concerned by your earlier caller, African-American gentleman, who uh, was kind of blaming white people in general for this thing. And I just really wanted to put it out there that, A, a lot of white people are voting for Barack Obama. A lot of white people are acknowledging that we need social change. Barack and Obama could not win unless he had a majority of white people voting for him. Absolutely It's right. that simple. Absolutely right. Even and if I, every black person voted for Barack Obama, if if white people also didn't vote for Barack Obama, he would not be elected. That's that's exactly right. And I, since the days of slavery, white people have been trying to abolish slavery, helping slaves escape. You know, all along in the in the civil rights movement, white people were very involved. I think the kind of thinking that that guy has going is is very polarizing and very dangerous, and could lead to a nationwide race war. Let's say there's this, not uh, going to be a race war, okay? And uh, there's no reason to believe there's going to be a race war. Um, and yeah, just saying that is so volatile, but okay, uh, we allow people to call and say anything they want. Right. But, but, uh, there's not going to be a race war. Well, I, I, I truly hope you're right. I mean, I saw the reactions to, say, the Rodney King verdict and, you know, uh, things of that nature. I think that, uh, you know, there, there is a volatile climate. I work with a lot of African-American people, and I, and I have to tell you, they're expressing that, you know, that they're feeling it. They're feeling... Uh, it, very much like this is a really important time for them, and they're also feeling the social stress of it. They're feeling like, wow, if this doesn't happen this time, you know, we're really being told that we're that we're further marginalized. And I don't yeah. agree with that. I think if it doesn't happen this time, we're closer than ever to it happening. And and by the way, it is going to happen. Right. It is going to happen. Well, I, I sure hope so, and and I, I agree with you on that, and 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 I also agree that if it doesn't happen this time, and you know, hopefully it'll happen next time. But uh, 
Yeah, man, I just want to tell people to know that, hey, we're all working for change out here, and please don't, please don't set up kind of polarizing ideas where it's us and you and one versus the other. We're all working for change out here, and I think it's really a small, ignorant minority who wants things to stay like they are. Yeah, well, I agree with that. That part I agree with. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hi to Kent on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Tom. Kent. What's happening? Not much. It's amazing, bro. It's amazing. Two things I wanted to point out to you. Uh, you know, a couple calls back, the guy was making reference to uh, people really trying to get, like, black people to get out and vote and encouraging it, and he made it seem like it was all of a sudden. But uh, need I remind him about uh, four years ago, the Kerry Edwards ticket, uh, you know, when Puff Daddy was promoting that old vote or die campaign? Uh, I remember that. Yeah, what, what was the whole drill with that? I mean, there was not a black person inside on the ticket, and, you know, it was still the same push. Uh, we, just, we go even further back with the whole Clinton era. You know, blacks were really behind that, that guy in particular. But I, another thing I wanted to point out was that, you know, people, they, they're having this, this change bug. We need to change. We need to do this and that. You know, unfortunately for John McCain, Barack Obama is the face of change. Like, he is not the typical, you know, uh, uh, he's the typical-looking black person. He's not the typical-looking white person. He's just, he, after he looks like change. And people identify with what they can, you know, what they can see, what they can touch, feel, you know, what they, they use the senses. Yeah, I think it's a, I, I think you're on to something important. It's a much more emotional, much more visceral thing. Right. Uh, you can have all the speeches you want. You can write all the platitudes you want. But look at the guy. Smart. Articulate, um, has a lot of great ideas. Um, he's a good-looking guy. <laughs> right. uh, uh, men and women like him. Uh, other countries think he's a rock star. It, it really doesn't matter what anybody says or does. Right, and yeah, they, they can't stop it, bro. They can't stop it. Next Tuesday, he will be elected. Ken, thank you for the call. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. That's Tom Ant. BlowMeUpTom.com. The Tom Likas Show.